and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Productions channel here at YouTube, and welcome to another box set showcase. Uh, today's box set showcase goes to, of course, the uh, the White Snake Little Box of Snakes box set, which was uh, actually was uh, released in 2013. Uh, though technically, this is again it was a uh, uh, like a more simple. Uh, version of the actual box of snakes, which was actually released in 2011, it had much more to offer. But this more stripped down, more simple, more simplified version of that box set is uh, was definitely a much more cheaper and was definitely more affordable. And it was just enough that I wanted at least because it at least had uh, pretty much. Uh, the albums that I uh, pretty much wanted, at least, or I needed, uh, from White Sick, which is basically at least, you know, the Snake Pie EP all the way up to about, uh, Saints and Sinners. Uh, so, and of course, uh, when I first got this, I did initially, I did a video on this. However, I always kind of wanted to redo it anyways. It was like a, a sealed reveal. And since I was, wasn't completely familiar, I didn't really, didn't, there was, uh, it just seemed to kind of jumbled around. I didn't really uh, have a, had a whole lot of any you know input or anything into it since I wasn't completely familiar. So this was a good uh, was so with this box set showcase series uh, uh, stuff. I it gave me the chance to actually want to actually do uh, this box set sh uh, or the really re show this box set and everything and actually go in more detail. So with that. Uh, let's definitely get into the actual box and everything, so let's just head right on in. Okay, so here we have the box here. There's your uh, little front cover there, the art. Spines. Of course, it's to uh, replicate like an actual box and everything. There's your barcode and whatnot. Now the back, which would again, again uh, lists all the, uh, the album covers there from there, and the track listings will be both sides. Again, uh, released in uh, uh, 2013, though originally it was released in 2011. Uh, but uh, this, but since this is Little Box of Snakes, it was released in uh, 2013, which is basically again like a a bit of a more smaller version of the uh, actual box of snakes, which uh, featured more. Anyways, um, let's definitely open up the box here and uh, go through uh, what's inside, the albums and so on. Alright. Box open. So here we got is the booklet here. If I can... Uh, uh. Alright. Nice uh, uh, photo shot of uh, David Coverdale. There it is. A little box of snakes. The sunburst years, 1978 to 1982. Let's look what's inside here for a bit. See, uh, track listing with all the uh, credits and song credits for each of the discs. Oops, uh, that just happened. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we got now lyrics, 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 Oops. lyrics. Uh, oops, burped. <laughs> lyrics, and I think that's pretty much the end of the page. Uh, let me look again. I think, I think there is some write-ups, or I don't know if there was any any, any other write-ups. No. Nothing, that's all you get. And uh, back there, all music produced by Martin Birch. Uh, so any of the other credits and that, and thank you. So there's your booklet. All right, on to the first, uh, first disc here, which would be the Snakebite EP, uh, which, of course, um, is the four-track EP from 1978. So there we got it, the uh, front cover here. Which is again uh, replicating the old 45 and uh, back song credits and stuff. Now, uh, CD. Great EP, great EP right here. 
uh, the only difference here w uh, with this uh, recording is that um, uh, John Lord has yet to join the band. This, I think, is one of the last of at least of uh, the original David Coverdale uh, lineup uh, before they really went with uh, the name White Snake. So, um, because later, I think within the year of 1978, this would then um, get uh, uh, kind of mixed. Uh, they they would do like a full record where would have the CP, and then of course uh, for the songs uh, from uh, like North Winds or even the self-titled White Snake album, I think uh, they would kind of combine it in a way of. Uh, David Coverdale's short-lived solo stuff before it really turned into White Snake. So that's a hint why John Lord is not featuring here. It's instead is uh, uh, Pete Sally. After this, John Lord would then replace him. So that's uh, disc one. Here we go with disc two, which of course is the first full-length uh, White Snake album, which is Trouble. If I can get the fucking CD out of here. All right. So we got front cover there, which of course it's using the, uh, oh geez, I would say the American uh, cover art, artwork, and not the European uh, cover. So still very cool artwork, great, um, just, a, just a cool art piece. So front, back cover, again, yeah, we're replicating the old uh, US uh, vinyl release. So there's your track listing there. Now, the CD, which is just black instead of white. Um, definitely a great album here. Definitely we see the debut of John Lord on uh, keyboards here. And uh, this is definitely, in many ways, really definitely sound, starts to sound like uh, where Deep Purple left off with like Come Taste the Band. Uh, just just a, definitely a great album. Uh, here for me, I mean both this and the Snake Bite EP are just great, great uh, stuff from White Snake. Uh, just a, just as a definitely a good album. So nothing really else to say here. So there's uh, disc two. Now on to uh, disc three is Live at Hammersmith from White Snake. Uh, this of course. Um, so um, I was gonna say something, but I think I'll say it after I uh, show. The, the packaging here, at least, uh, here. All right, so front cover. Just uh, definitely another great artwork uh, illustration. And the uh, back cover with the, the song titles and everything. It's great. It's great. Now the CD, which would just be, again, plain white. No, plain black, excuse me. Uh, this, of course, uh, was featured as a uh, album of the week uh, just recently, so I don't have to really talk too much. It's a great live album, just great stuff. That's what, uh, I'll definitely also, uh, once again, will say that later on uh, in 1980, this would actually would get uh, released as a part of the Live in the Heart of the City live album, which I'll then eventually get to. So uh, there, there is disc number three. Now on to disc number four, probably the most infamous White Snake albums from this time period, uh, which is Love Hunter. If I can once again get it out, I should have just pulled the discs out, but I didn't feel like it. So Love Hunter, <laughs> definitely one of the most controversial uh, artwork in a way, but uh, still uh, great, great uh, piece. Though I'll have to say, definitely, definitely something cool. And uh, now. The back cover, again, uh, just copying every bit of the original vinyl release of the album with the track listing and so on, and great live shots. Now, the CD. Um, class, uh, great album for, for me, just a classic, classic uh, uh, album from White Snake. This, of course, will be the final album for drummer uh, Dick Dowell. Who, of course, after this will then get uh, replaced by Ian Pace. Still, uh, just a great, uh, great album from uh, White Snake. Definitely a m much more, uh, a little heavier sounding uh, compared to uh, the first album. This one definitely uh, has a little more uh, rocks harder. It definitely really kind of tends to show more and more of the burn air deep purple sound. You really start to get a little bit more of that on this album. This is definitely a classic album, though, uh, for me, so 
great right down from White Snake. So that's disc number four. Uh, yeah, I'll be di uh, yeah, that's disc number four. On to disc number five, which of course is Ready and Willing. There we go. Uh, so uh, here we got the uh, front cover there. Just a classic, classic art piece there. Now the back cover. Yeah, and every bit of emulating the old vinyl uh, pressing and everything. Got, again, very cool art piece with the snake there. Of course, there's your track listing. So, now on to show the CD. Here we see the debut for EMP. So now we pretty much have every bit of the uh, Mark, at least the Mach 3 and Mark IV lineup of uh, Deep Purple in place here from David Coverdale, John Lord, and Ian Pace. And this is definitely a much different sounding album from White Sake. At some, I'm not. I'm gonna save the rest of my opinions for whenever I do a uh, when I do the album of the week spotlight on this album, which will be uh, out. I think June first, actually. Uh, yeah, that will be uh, June first. Right. Yeah, it'll be June first. That uh, album of the week video, I think, for uh, Ready and Willing, because it will be right on its uh, 40th anniversary. So uh, I don't want to keep this any much longer. So just a definitely a good album. So there is disc number five. Now on to disc number six, which of course is uh, the the final live album here in the set, which of course is Live in the Heart of the City, released in 1980. So there's your front cover there. Back cover, uh, classic, classic uh, live shot there. So, there's your track listing. Again, uh, emulating the old... Um, actually, really, it doesn't really completely emulate any of the other pressings because of it's just it's basically um, just the double record uh, version, but without the second disc, because the second disc would have been Live in the Heart of the City. Uh, no, uh, Live at Hammersmith, excuse me. Uh, still... Uh, there, great, uh, great back shot and everything. So now CD, uh, great, great live album too. Uh, I'd still kind of still somewhat prefer live at Hammersmith, but this is definitely another solid live album from White Snake from here. Uh, definitely, um, just um, get, uh, the band is in top form here, and this of course is uh, pretty much uh, comprises of. Uh, again, uh, the ready and willing uh, lineup with uh, uh, John Lord and Ian Pace in the band. Uh, just, just a great, great live album. So there is disc number six. Uh, now on to disc number seven, which of course is the second uh, full-length album with uh, Ian Pace on board. Which is, of course, is Come and Get It from 1981. There's your front cover there. Definitely great, great, uh, cool fucking art piece right here. Uh, a lot of these old uh, White Snake albums just have pretty cool art pieces. Uh, if you really ask me, they have, they were definitely very imaginative. <laughs> and so there's the back cover there again. Another great piece. So in many many ways, the snake broke finally let loose out of the little uh, glass uh, apple here. Uh, just a Great back cover and everything, again, uh, emulating the old final pressing. So there you go, back cover, and now CD. Usually, this is at the uh, surprisingly, this album uh, for some, I, I will I tend to also see some lukewarm stuff towards this album, but I think this is another good album from White Snake. It's uh, definitely uh, not nearly as melancholic or nearly as bluesy or as. Uh, Rainy and Willing, but this, there is still some good stuff on this album. This definitely is a more of a more of a harder rocking album compared to that. I mean, it still uh, continues this sort of uh, David Coverdale or David, uh, Tommy Bullen era of Deep Purple sound, but it definitely really expands on that uh, very well, and it still is another good album from White Snake Co. So, that's another good album. So there it is, uh, disc number seven with Come and Get It. Now the final disc, which is disc number eight, which is uh, Saints and Sinners from 1982. So here we got the front cover there. Another great uh, art piece there. So, and of course, back cover. 
great shot of uh, David Coverdale. They're again emulating the old vinyl pr pressing for it. And now, the CD. This is probably right now, uh, and for ben, I mean, I always tend to I'll go back and forth between uh, Love Hunter or, or even Come and Get It at times, or even Reading and Willing uh, or uh, Trouble at times to see which one's my actual favorite White Snake album. But it's actually uh, Saints and Sinners right here. This is actually hands down my absolute favorite White Snake album. It's just a go-to album for me when I'm in the mood. It's a it's just a great combination of. There are, again, the previous albums of the more bluesier, deep purple sound, but really kind of transitioning to what you kind of get with Slighted In. It's a great fucking album from start to finish. There's nothing bad on here. This, of course, features the original versions of Here I Go Again and uh, uh, Cry in the Rain, which all get re-recorded for the 1987 album. Though I prefer these ver these more bluesier versions, actually, I really also do prefer the version of Here I Go Again on here. Uh, the fact, and uh, John Lord's organ sound on this, uh, on the, the track, just really uh, elevates the whole song. It really kind of gives it more of a, almost very soulful feel to it, almost kind of very melancholic. It's actually a really good power ballad, with, it just uh, turned it into a great power ballad. Instead of those cheesy 80s synth sound on the 87 version. But uh, I digress. Great, great uh, album from White Snake. So there you go. There is all eight albums there. Cool set. So with that, uh, just a great box set. Still very affordable to this day. So with that, I hope you all enjoyed the Terry Thrasher Sam out. And I'll see you all later. Take care, everyone.